We are moving to our next presenter. I'll add Vicky. Thank you, Felix. Vicky is preparing his present, her presentation. I think we will have a presentation directly from Mexico, right? All right. So I'm trying to share my screen. Hmm. Share, share screen. We still have uh, two minutes, Vicky, so. And can you Plenty see my time. Can you see this? Can you see the screen? No, not yet. Hmm. Share. Share a screen. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, I have it here. So we can see your screen. No, perfect. Yeah, if you can hide the, the browser, maybe do a, a full screen. How do I do a full screen? No. F11. Something F11. like that. F11. Mm, F11. Yeah, we still see the... Yeah. F10, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in my browser, F11 switch to full screen, but... Yeah. F11, F11. There. Well, at least you don't see the bottom things. Yes. But you so we you, still, we still yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see that. You can still see this. Um, this thing. No. Yeah, but. Yeah, but don't worry. It's 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 okay. I think we can. Are you showing some code or something like that? No. Oh, it's it's okay right now. It's okay. Okay, I can start. Uh, in fifteen seconds, yes, you can. So let, let's start to sharp on the hour. Oh, now it's full screen. Yes, <laughs> it's full screen. Right. So, Vicky. The stage is, is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I'm going to talk about graph algorithms in the database. Well, at least that is the title. And more with PG routing. This is not going to be too technical. So, the first thing I want to mention is that normally in Phosphor-G's, I gather signatures from the participants. And this is a great memory that I have of Malena Liebman with her own handwriting the last time I saw her on 2019 in Phosphor-G Argentina. And I'm dedicating this presentation to Malena on her memory. So, who am I? I'm an economist. So, I'm doing PG routing development. I'm from Mexico and I am an OSGO fan and participant. And that is my email where you can contact me. And I will be giving this presentation about PG routing. So what are we going to cover today is what is PG routing? What is routing? How we develop PG routing? We're going to mention some of the PG routing project products. We're going to talk about graphs and we're going to talk about the student contributions in the last two years. So going into topics, what is PG routing? Well, PG Routing is an OS Geo community project. And it's open source. It's a library that is uh, uh, 
like it requires PostGIS enable database on Postgres SQL database. And it serves to route, oh, that's why the name, <laughs> vehicles or pedestrians in, for example, a city. So in general, this is what is PG routing and always your community open source library for an enabled database or geographical enabled database in Postgres for doing routing. But what is routing? Routing, well, it's basically these questions. I am here and I want to go there. And we're going to go using the shortest distance. And we know that uh, from elementary school that the shortest distance is in a straight line. But there we go. Once we get our route. And oh, surprise. The elephant doesn't have wings and it's going above buildings above uh, crossing streets that shouldn't be crossed on those positions and well the straight line didn't work quite well when we're putting the routing in context so we need to develop PE routing to solve that problem when we have things in context and we do it by working on the theory the theory is very important for us and in this presentation i'm going to present a a theory that it's out of the box to demonstrate how we develop pe routing so uh, in secondary school, we were taught that gravity pulls objects down to the earth. And probably in high school, we were taught about tension. So if an object gets pulled down and it's tied up to a string, well, the string will get tense. And we're going to use this theory to solve a routing the problem that we had before. PE routing, we do it by its test-driven development. So what that means is that we create our tests and we define, this is my testing data, this is the expected result, and then we develop the algorithm. So let's start with the test, testing data. So suppose that we have this um, situation. It's not drawn to scale, as you can see, because like the edge two, it's very long compared with the edge 14, which is the, we can think about it of the length of the edges. So this drawing is not up to scale, but we want to go from node one and go to node five. So that is our objective. How do we do it using the shortest path? Well, we manually expect a result. We try many things and we find out that we need to traverse the blue, light blue segment, the dark segment, and the orange segment. Uh, in this case, it's uh, black because the background is white, but in our algorithm, the segment that it's black, we're going to color it white. So, Let's start with implementing our algorithm. The previous graph 
is representing this map. Okay? Uh, the black segment, it's under a tunnel. You can see the tunnel. So, we're going to model this map with our algorithm, which is going to consist on segments represented with the strings, the color strings, and the vertices represented with these balls. And we have our red ball on the left and the blue ball on the right. So let's do test our theory to find the shortest path from the red ball to the blue ball. And we know that our expected result is using the light blue string, the white string that it's not seen because it's on a tunnel, and the orange string. That is our expected result. So let's see the demonstration. <coughs> that is our map. We remove we remove the tunnel and that is the graph that it's representing the, the map. We want to go from the red to the blue. We ho hold the red ball, which is our source, and we get all the strings that are uh, tense that depart from the blue ball, which are the orange, the white, and the blue. And we get our straight line that consists on blue, white, and orange. <laughs> now I have to add there. So with this um, demonstration, I hope you liked it, we proved that our algorithm was correct. We obtained the expected result. And that is how we develop PG routing. Right now, we have over 30,000 unit tests proving that the algorithms that we are implemented, implementing are OK. So now let's talk about PG routing protocol. We not only have PG routing, we also have SOOF projects that help people to use PG routing. The first one is OSM to PG routing, which will take OSM data and import it to the database so that we can use PG routing with that data. Note that you cannot use PG routing, if you import data with OSM to PO, for example, it needs to be done with OSM to PG routing if you're using OSM data. We have functions that allow uh, users to use other kind of data, but we are an open source project, so we develop this for open source data. The next uh, sub project that we have is P routing layer. It's a very simple um, plugin for QGIS that allows people to play around with basic P routing functions and visually see the results. And this year, we started with VRP routing, thanks to Ashish Kumar. And VRP stands for Vehicle Routing Problems. Right now, PU Routing has an experimental function that is for vehicle routing problems, which is Pick Deliver. And we decided that we're going to start using a different repository for those kind of routing problems. So 
Uh, a vehicle routing problem is, for example, to solve problems like uh, you have a set of vehicles and you need to pick up garbage containers and you need an answer of how the vehicle is going to go from the depot where the vehicle starts with the driver how it traverses the city and at the end after it's been full how it goes to the dump to get emptied and goes back to the depot so that could be one vehicle routing problem you can have school buses that you need to pick up the students and take them to school or vice versa you get the students from the school and distribute the students around the city so those are the kind of problems that we intend to solve on the vrp routing uh, new extension the requirement of this new extension is going to be with uh, some projects that are not actually packed. So it's not going to be a package yet because the dependencies need to be existing there. So, and of course, PE routing. And the summary of current PE routing that you can obtain with packages is OSM to PE routing, PE routing, and uh, PE routing layer. Now, the topic of the graphs, which is what the title of this presentation was about. Uh, for the graphs, PE routing actually, it's about graphs, graphs algorithms. And you can interpret a graph like for example a river and we have algorithms that make flow analysis you can have analysis of flow of vehicles flow of water flow of electricity with some of the function functionality that we have in pg routing so it's not only about routing cars or pedestrians uh, we can also use PE routing uh, to find out interactions between people, like the six steps from one person to another, how long, how that you don't take uh, more than six steps to get a connection with somebody else in the world kind of problem. So we can use PE routing for human connections. We can use PE routing also for example, for connectivity of computers, routers, servers. And of course, what we're used to is to use PE routing for routing vehicles. But if you interpret the graph, you can interpret it to determine where your sour system would go, where the electricity lines would be placed. So the graphs, the interpretation of the graphs is not only for vehicles. That is the point that I want to make sure that it's gone over you. You can use it for much more many things. Now, in PE routing, we have several classifications of the functions. We have official functions, proposed, and experimental. Experimental functions are the newest functions, and they are written normally by the Google Summer of Code students. And once we have some feedback from the general users, we can move them to proposed and once they are proposed in the next major version they can go to be part of the official functions so basically experimental please try to use them and soon we will release uh, version 3.3 it's not a major release it's a, a minor release 
and this will contain new functionality that was done by these student contributions from Google Summer of Code of 2020 and 2021, like Ashish, who also helped on VRP routing. He added a depth first search traversal on a graph and a sequential vertex coloring of a graph. Vinith Kumar added also a coloring function, which is edge coloring, which is, comes from boost libraries. And what this graph does instead compared with the one that Ashish created, it colors edges. Prakash also contributed to PG routing, but in his case, he is converting a graph to getting the, using the Langur Tarjan dominator tree to obtain the dominator tree. Also, he created a beeper type, which is a coloring graph, a coloring algorithm that just tries to color a graph with two colors, if it can be parted in two. Himanshu Rash created a function to test planarity of a graph. These graphs K5 and K33 are not planar graphs. Basically, like streets would be planar graphs, except when you add bridges, which are crossing. So that wouldn't be a planar graph. A planar graph you can draw in a two-dimensional space without having segments crossing. And Han Wu, who created a transit closure algorithm for a graph. For the future, we don't want to be an OSGO community anymore. That is right. But don't be sad, because we want to be an OSGO project. So we're working hard to make this happen. Hopefully, we will have our um, application to become an OSGO project uh, before this year ends. And please, please, start using PU routing, start contributing to PU routing. You can fork PU routing on GitHub. And thanks very much for coming here. I'm going to post some links of about PU routing, the documentation, the workshop uh, support and my my mail and you can look for me in in walking around in the social gathering or looking at more presentations thanks very much thank you very much vicky it was an amazing presentation thank you i've just shared your your presentation on the on the chat on, okay on the venue less so people can can review your presentation and uh, uh, we have questions from from the audience please uh, add your questions on the venue less platform but uh, we have already one question vicky on the, on the private chat here you can have a question about uh, which attributes can be used for for routing Okay, yes, you can use a speed to get route by time. Uh, you can use uh, inclination, like for a pedestrian routing that is going for, for a hiking, going uphill, it's more, more slower than going downhill. So you can make these costs uh, depend on the angle of the, the road um you can make the routing depending on the importance of the road like uh, for very wide roads you want wide pipes for sewers and for very narrow roads you want smaller pipes uh you can 
make it dependent on the amount of people that are living in the road instead of the length of the road. So yes, you can use the cost and you can use it on the fly. That means that you don't have to pre-process everything, but you can just change your cost function on the fly. Thank you, Vicky. We have another question uh, regarding if PRG routing can be used to build isochron areas. So uh, yes, with PG routing, PGR driving distance, you can use this cost to make these areas. And we also have PGR alpha shape that shouldn't be in PG routing, it should be in post GIS because that is a, a geometry function, but for historical things, it's in PG routing and but you can also use the results of driving distance to with st collect i mean st convex hole and many other functions in posts that can create this area okay it's it's not uh automated but can be done uh, yes it's in yeah. many steps just like you saw in regina's presentation you need many steps to achieve like what you really want to achieve okay maybe can be a contribution to page routing to to make these isochrones uh, more automatic right mm. Well, one thing that I, by experience, know is like, if I start thinking as a user, if I start using PG routing, which I don't like to use it, then my mind goes is like, I want this function to work to this application, then I forget all the other applications. So having these kind of automatic it's not a good idea because there are other functions that can do a similar answer and depending on your problem is the one that you want to use so it's like i have to be more like a general it's a library and with libraries you just join the pieces to build the application it's not application focused it's library focus mm -hmm. good good um so we have another question more related with metrics and, and uh, comparing pg routing with other uh, routing solutions do you have any kind of benchmarks that you can share or okay um I don't have a benchmark. I'm more focused on the developing. Um, but PG routing works on the database with both Gs. They are kind of linked together. And once when I started doing PG routing, it was I was a user because you cannot code if you don't know what is it about. And we were using OSRM also. And OSRM, you needed to kind of process the OSM data and create it, this morning file, the afternoon file, and the evening file, because the traffic is different between them. And it was terrible. I mean, you couldn't just change things change the parameters easily to get these traveling times it was terrible so by having the data on the database it makes it more easy because you can have functions that on the fly will create these costs that will be used on the on the pu routing functions so that is from my experience. 
But as always, I mean, if the data is wrong, the results will be wrong. So that's why the unit tests are so important. Because with big data, you really get lost on if it is really the shortest path, for example, if that's what you're looking. Because it's a very huge city and maybe, well, I was working with Montevideo data that time and I didn't even have an idea of that city. I didn't even know if it was correct data or if the problem was on the algorithm or on the data. So um, unit tests, that's why I created those unit tests and test driven, just to make sure that things work. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Vicky. I think it was uh, clear. We have two more questions, if you can go them uh, in just one minute. These are more specific questions. One about the PGR uh, direct uh, CHPP, if it is already in production. Which one? PGR underscore directed uh, CHPP. <laughs> ah, the Chinese trolling postman problem. Uh, I guess that's what, I mean, I need to really see the name. Okay. Um, that is still I... experimental. Okay. That is still experimental. So it's there, but it's experimental. Okay. And the last question, if, if the graph is big, would the Postgres uh, perform mm -hmm. well or the graph need to fit in memory? Okay, it's like, I want to route from my house to the, the, the store that it's in the corner. What do I want to use as my graph data? Whole complete America continent? from Patagonia to, to Alaska or Mexico only, or my state, I live in the state of Mexico or only my city. So that's why it's so important that you use extensively the POGIS functions and you make sure what graph you want. So bound your graph, make it small, Otherwise, it will take ages to load. I mean, my computer wouldn't hold whole America. So what is your... Okay, okay. that's it. Thanks. 